We have just built a new studio at the Skahoy headquarters in Copenhagen. Out there we have our wonderful showroom. In here we have the control room of the studio and in there I'm often sitting hosting webinars or making YouTube videos where we demonstrate Skahoy controllers and gear along with partnering devices. It could be cameras, video switches, routers, software packages and so forth. Today we will show you how we use our own gear in the studio. And a uh, little surprising, we are using a Colorfly. Colorfly is this controller here, which is normally used to shade cameras. It's designed, it's thought to shade cameras. But if you have listened closely to all our videos, you know that Skahoy controllers are not bound to a particular function. They can generally be used in many other contexts. So even though this was conceived to do a four channel camera shading operation, it can also be used to control audio and to switch video for webinar production. So this is what I'll show you right now, what we have done here. It actually goes into a series of videos where we also have been looking at the PTC Extreme over here, which also is um, having a super, super customized configuration. So it's kind of the next thing, a um, very customized configuration here. And um, just like we did with the PTC controller, the PTC Extreme, we'll look at the different things it controls. We are controlling an ATEM video switcher. It's right up there on the wall and we use that to uh, create a um, super source image, for instance, to uh, divide the screen and then we also use it to demonstrate. So it's also kind of our development uh, ATEM. I think we have 10 plus ATEM switches in the house of various different sorts and we need to make sure that our controllers work across all the models. So this is why. Um, we also operate a Roland uh, window processor and that's the little device we find up there on the wall and that device will take four HDMI inputs and spit them out in various configurations. And that's also very useful when you want to do some sort of uh, super source like things. Once again, we have here a piece of um, equipment that can do the same as you could also do with vMix and with ATEM. But in this control room setting, my producer is using it to create either special layouts for the productions or for himself to manage the screens in front of him. So we can also control that. And finally, we have vMix here. So Atom, vMix and Roland. Now let's look at how this is controlled. So we have here the super source of the Atom um, on, on this button. So this gives me access to box number one, two, three and four on the Atom super source. And you can see how this the select to the source selector is changing as I'm changing the box. So if I want to route camera three into super source box number two, it happens as I'm now pressing this. You can see it on the screen here. There's uh, the super source down in the corner and you see how I am basically changing the source of box number two. If I choose box number three, I'm changing the source of that one and so forth. Now let's choose something for box number two that, uh, let me see. Ah, now I have everything the same here. So no, we don't want that. Let's just uh, go through and have individual sources everywhere. Uh, by the way, I also have recording and streaming on off, which is being used during production. So that's super useful as well. There has been a shift key integrated. So when we have a limited amount of buttons here, we have additional sources available by this toggle shift key that gives me up to camera number eight uh, assignable for the super source boxes. On the encoders on the top, I can adjust the super source location. So let's take box number one as an example. And here we have the size. So currently it's at 50%, but I can reduce the size of box number one. As you can see right there on the screen, I am changing the size. I can also change the Y position and the X position of this one. If I want to reset, I can press and hold. But actually, if I do so, I get it more into the center of the image, as you can see. So, and if I press once, then I can adjust uh, largely the position so it gives me a little more course adjustment which can be useful if I want to move uh, quickly and finally let's just increase the size again so I think this is about as far as I want to take it for this demonstration and we'll move on to talk about the next thing which is an ATEM menu that deals with actually switching so in this case we have access to a little video switcher surface here on these six buttons again with the shift key that ac uh, accesses the additional sources that I want up to camera 8, super source and media player. So let's just check this out on program. You see on program we have camera 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and of course super source and media player uh, by simply 
directly selecting this to a program. So what happened to preview? Well, in this case, it was not useful to have a preview. It was the, the intention was to have direct to program editing on this row of buttons. And of course you can have that because the Skahoy controller has, um, and clearly this is an example which is not found in our repo, repo of configurations. It's, it's tailor-made for our control room here. So uh, we decided we just need directly to program switching on this row of buttons. Up here we have Kia enable, uh, so I can enable and disable toggle all the Kias, upstream Kias, the two downstream Kias in the Atom Mini Extreme, and I can also select sources up here. So if I have Kia number one on, you see this is right here. I can adjust the source, the fill source of this key by rotating this, this button. So there I basically browse through. Let me just check if we have something. Yes, because if I hold down the shift key, there's even additional stuff I can do for these um, source selection. I have upstream key a one, two, three, four, and then I have media player one and two where I can select the, um, the, the source of that one. So that would require me to uh, put that onto the super source. So if I, let me see, no, um, let's just find, yeah, we can go to media player number one. We have media player number one here. So if I go up here, we can now change what is on media player number one with this uh, here. But basically there's some source selection going on, media player, content selection, downstream key source selection or field source selection happening uh, right here. So um, that brings me on to the DVE. But before we go there, I would like to just see some content that makes sense. So this would be one thing for my uh, media player. So with the DVE, I'm currently using DVE number one on Kia number one. And um, I have some presets I can activate here, also some size uh, adjustments. And you can see that I use four-way buttons to adjust the size of my DVE. So um, that's one thing you can do. And that's kind of like, okay, we didn't have six encoders, but we can easily use four-way buttons to do additional adjustments. So that's also really easy to, uh, to manage on the controller here. Now, the, um, the top buttons here are basically uh, doing the same thing. So we have individual size X and Y, but this, um, this adjustment here is operating size in X and Y direction simultaneously, as you can see. I think if I, no, wait, no, okay, that is always the same size. Sometimes we have an action where you can specify to go from one to the other, but that would just be um, kind of bloating the features here. So, okay, X and Y positioning as well. Now, if I go on to DV number two, I have it for DV two, three, and four, and so forth, but you get the point. That was a lot of ATEM stuff happening right here on this surface. Again, it's designed, it's the features broken out that was useful for our production. So this is why they are here and they have three specifically made menus to address the, that particular need. Now let's take a look at the Roland. That's a completely different device, but doing something of the same. And we have the source right here. So you can see that it has a, um, it's a window processor that currently gives us a quad view. But if I change to scene number one, you see that the sources are arranged differently. Now I just see the Skahoy background here. Then I press scene number two, and we see a transition into this composition, which is what is uh, designed in this unit. And then I have a change to scene number three. I could go back to scene number two and so forth. This is how the Roland VP42H works. And you can also, from this surface, design what goes into these layers on the scenes. Okay, so um, right now, if I want to do that, I want to select scene number two for adjusting this. So I'm just going to uh, number two here, and then I can decide which layer I want to manipulate. Probably one of these two layers is layer number one, which is the one I have selected. So if I press here, you'll see that I'm changing the source of layer number one by these buttons. In other words, one of the four inputs, HDMI inputs on the unit. If I go to layer number two, you'll see that I'm basically changing layer number two, which was the one on the left side and so on. So I can also manipulate how the, the sources go into the different layers that the VP42H from Roland can do. And uh, finally, I have transition time up here. So that's broken out as well. Now, moving on to vMix, huge subject. We are controlling audio with the vMix setting on the Colorfly. We have uh, other devices that will control other things in vMix, but the Colorfly is, is uh, addressing the audio. Since it's a fader um, controller, then we have 
the faders, we are using the faders here to control the audio as well. And the basic change is that you flip between a mode where you have uh, access to uh, the master and the bus A and B, I think. So you can see on the, on the screen here, I'm adjusting the master volume here. I'm adjusting, in this case, the, um, I think, talkback microphone. And then we have Casper's mic, so my audio. And finally, a backup microphone in the studio. So those are the four things here which are hidden under this shift key. But if I toggle out of that, I have access to the four incoming sources. When we do webinars and we have four guests on these calls, we have access to uh, one of the, the vMix call um, audio volumes here. You can, if I move all these faders simultaneously, you can see they are moving on the screen as well. So that's one thing we are doing on the Colorfly. And what is over here is essentially managing the, the mute and the solo features of these. So here we have, an ability to bring the guests, the vMix call inputs onto um, uh, the, the, the output. I mute them, I don't um, by that function. And finally, I have here solo um, function as well. You can see that on the screen. We also have specific keys here in a different color. Notice how that's kind of useful to say this is the guest and then the host would be colored differently. So again, for usability and the um, essence of creating a surface that is user-friendly and easy to explain. It's very easy to identify the host here and the host would be me in this case. I can solo and I can mute myself with these two keys. I go into this menu and I will show what is hidden on the shift layer of this one. You see how um, I'm now able to route things to the master bus or, uh, or not. So basically as I am pressing this you see how on the screen I am routing my guests to the master bus and uh, down here you can not see it, but you will see it again. I, you can route the, the voice of the guests into the in-ear microphone of the host. And we need to use the mouse and right click here to see it. So if I right click here, you can see bus number C, which is my in-ear bus is here. And currently the first guest is not routed to that, but I can do that on the panel. And if I right click, you can see it's now routed to bus number C as well. So that's hidden in the UI, but it's not hidden on the Skyhoy controller. So I'm able to thus route the sources from our guest sources into the in-ear um, in piece of the host in the studio. So these two buttons, the talkback microphone routing is basically bringing the talkback microphone onto bus number B which is what the panelists can hear. And then you have the final one here, which is bringing it to the in-air piece of the host in the studio. And once again, we need to right click to see that it's on bus number C and I can disable it here and it's not on bus number C. So that's the feature there. Finally, I want to point out how not only can you customize and make user-friendly surfaces by bringing out only the things that people need for um, direct tactile access, we can also use colors to divide things in ways that are, are guiding the operator. So if you look at the colors used for faders and buttons, you can see that a pink color is being used for the host volume. So right now these faders here are related to the host in the studio. This one, the, the bluish color, is related to talkback. So this is adjusting talkback volume just like the two talkback buttons here are colored um, light blue. And finally, uh, this one, the red one, is the master volume. If I move over here, we use green color for all our vMix calls coming in from the outside. This is probably the least related to shading configuration I've ever seen on a Colorfly, but we really need you to realize that Colorfly, even though we often show it for shading cameras, is designed far beyond that. It is capable of managing so many other things, everything from, from switching and adjusting DVEs and sources on your window processors and, and switches to managing audio sources in vMix or other devices as well, and more to come. So this is how you need to think about our controllers as modular pieces of hardware. And with Blue Pill Reactor, you have seen even more of that power coming to you where multiple panels can easily come together and be made into a seamless single surface, regardless of how you want to combine it. So that's the power of the Skahoi universe and where we are going.